In this video, we're going to talk about acid-base neutralization reactions. So consider the reaction between aqueous sulfuric acid and aqueous sodium hydroxide. So what I want you to do is predict the products, write a balanced formula equation, and then write the total ionic equation and the net ionic equation. So feel free to try this. Now whenever you have an acid-base reaction, it's going to produce a salt and water. Now this is a double replacement reaction. So the first and the last ions will pair up together. And the two in the middle, sodium and the sulfate ions, will pair up together. Now whenever you pair up hydrogen with hydroxide, they will always produce H2O, which is a liquid. Now, what about pairing up sodium and sulfate? Sodium has a positive 1 charge. Sulfate has a minus 2 charge. So what is the chemical formula between these two ions? What is the chemical formula of sodium sulfate? We need two sodium ions to match up the negative 2 charge of the sulfate ion. Or we could use this crisscross method. And so it's going to be Na2 SO4 1, which we can just write it as Na2SO4. And so that's the chemical formula of sodium sulfate. Now, sodium sulfate, is it soluble or insoluble in water? I don't like when this happens. What would you say? Alkali metals in group 1, like sodium, lithium, potassium, are always soluble. So therefore, this is still an aqueous phase. Now that we have the products of this reaction, we need to balance the formula equation. So right now we have two sodium atoms on the right side. So we need to put a 2 in front of NaOH. And notice how many hydrogen atoms we have. Two in sulfuric acid and two in the other substance. So we have a total of four hydrogen atoms, which means we need to put a 2 in front of water. And now the formula equation is balanced. So at this point, what we need to do is write the total ionic equation. So everything that is in the aqueous phase, we need to break it up into ions. The only exception is water. It's not in the aqueous phase, so we're going to rewrite it the way it is. So let's start with sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is composed of two hydrogen ions and one sulfate anion. Here we have two formula units of sodium hydroxide. So it consists of two sodium ions and two hydroxide ions. Now we're going to rewrite H2O exactly the way it is. We're not going to change it. By the way, the phase for all of the ions, they're all in the aqueous phase. But I'm not going to write it for each one. If you have a homework assignment, you could do that. Now sodium sulfate consists of two sodium ions and one sulfate ion. So this is the total ionic equation with all the ions being in the aqueous phase. Now our next step is to identify the spectated ions. The spectated ions are exactly the same on both sides. Sodium is a spectated ion and sulfate is a spectated ion. So now what we have left, 2 H plus, 2 hydroxide ions, 2 water molecules, this is the net ionic equation. However, we're not quite finished yet because we can reduce it. Notice that the coefficients all consist of even numbers. So we can divide everything by 2. So the final net ionic equation is H plus plus OH minus produces liquid water. And let's write the phases. So H plus is dissolved in the solution. So it's in an aqueous phase, the same as hydroxide is. But water is a liquid. So this is the net ionic equation of this acid-base neutralization reaction. Now let's look at another example. Acetic acid 
an aqueous solution of acetic acid reacts with an aqueous solution of potassium hydroxide. So feel free to try this problem. Predict the products of this chemical reaction, balance the formula equation, and then write the total and the net ionic equations. So acetic acid is dissolved in water, it's an aqueous phase, and the same is true for potassium hydroxide. So let's follow the same steps that we used in the last example. So we're going to pair up H with OH, which we know is going to produce liquid water. Next, we're going to pair up K with acetate. Potassium has a positive one charge. Acetate has a negative one charge. So these two, they're going to combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're going to get KC2H3O2. Whenever the magnitude of the charges are the same, you can simply write them together. Potassium acetate, is it soluble or insoluble? According to the solubility rules, acetate is always soluble, so it's in an aqueous phase, and water is in a liquid phase. Now the chemical reaction is already balanced, so we don't have to change anything. So now we can move on to writing the total ionic equation. So the stuff that's in the aqueous phase, we could separate them into ions. Now there's something that you shouldn't do, however, there's an exception to this. For acetic acid, you should not write it like this. And the question is, do you know why? Acetic acid is a weak acid, and as a result, only a very small amount actually dissociates into ions. The bulk of it remains in its undissociated form. In the last example, we had sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, and strong acids ionizes completely. And that's why we were able uh, to decompose sulfuric acid into its uh, ions. Now you have to be careful too, because with sulfuric acid, if you place it in neutral water, initially, it breaks up into H+, and HSO4-. The second hydrogen is actually hard to come off, but we reacted it with strong base. The strong base will eliminate the H plus ion, and then HSO4- will react with hydroxide. And in the end, you're going to get the sulfate ion. So for the last example, it's okay with what we did because we reacted it with strong base. But just keep this in mind. If you're placing sulfuric acid in water and you want to write the ionization of it, Initially, it ionizes to HSO4-. Only under basic conditions will you get rid of the second hydrogen and produce sulfate. So I just want to clarify that uh, if for the, any of you out there who may have those questions. But for these type of problems, if you're dealing with a weak acid, do not separate it into ions if you want to write the net ionic equation. So in the total ionic equation, we're not going to separate the weak acid into its components. We're just going to rewrite it. Now, potassium hydroxide, that's soluble in water. It dissociates completely. So we can write it as K plus and OH minus. Water, we're going to leave it the same. So water is in the liquid phase. Everything else is in the aqueous phase. And potassium acetate, we can dissociate that into ions. So now, what are the spectator ions in this problem? The only spectator ion that we have is the potassium ion. So now, what we have left over is the net ionic equation, which consists of acetic acid, hydroxide, liquid water, and the acetate ion. So everything is in the aqueous phase, except liquid water. So this is the net ionic equation for this example. So just remember, for weak acids, do not dissociate it into ions, because it doesn't dissociate completely. And that's what you need to take from this lesson. Let's look at another example. Aqueous nitric acid reacts with solid 
magnesium hydroxide. Go ahead and predict the products and write the net ionic equation. So feel free to pause the video if you want to. So we know H is going to react with OH and it's going to produce liquid water. And then we need to pair up magnesium with nitrate. Magnesium is an alkaline earth metal found in group 2 and therefore it has a positive 2 charge. Nitrate is a polyatomic ion with a negative 1 charge. So the chemical formula between these two ions is going to be Mg1 and O3 2. So magnesium nitrate is simply Mg and O3 2. Now we know water is a liquid, but magnesium nitrate, is it soluble or insoluble? What would you say? Nitrates are always soluble, so this is an aqueous phase. Now we need to balance the reaction. We have two nitrates on the right side, so therefore we need a two in front of nitric acid. And if we calculate the number of hydrogen atoms on the left, we've got two here, another two, so we need four on the right side, so we've got to put a two in front of water. So now the formula equation is balanced. Now let's write the total ionic equation. So nitric acid, is it a strong acid or is it a weak acid? If it's a weak acid, we shouldn't separate it into ions, but if it's a strong acid, we should. And it turns out that nitric acid is a strong acid. So we're going to write it as two H plus ions and two nitrate ions. Now magnesium hydroxide is a solid, so it doesn't dissociate well in water. So we're going to leave it as solid magnesium hydroxide. Only things that are in the aqueous phase may we dissociate into ions. So water is going to stay the same, but magnesium nitrate, we can separate that into ions. So what's the spec to the ion in this particular example? So the ion that we see that appears to be exactly the same on both sides are the nitrate ions. So what we have left over is going to be the net ionic equation, which is 2H plus plus magnesium hydroxide. And that produces liquid water and the Mg plus 2 or 2 plus ion. For online assignments, you may have to write this as 2 plus instead of plus 2. So H plus is in the aqueous phase, and the same is true for the magnesium ion. Magnesium hydroxide is in the solid phase, and water is in the liquid phase. So this is the net ionic equation for this example.